there. Um, and welcome to today's video. In today's video, I'm going to test and um, demonstrate the brush and pencil. I call it pencil powder blender and the textured fixative by brush and pencil. So I hope you enjoy. In today's video, I'm going to try out the brush and pencil color pencil powder blender and the textured fixative also from brush and pencil um, so what is the powder blender it actually is just another medium to blend your color pencil work with just like uh, odorless mineral spirits or zested or um, alcohol colorless alcohol markers or pencils uh, it basically is just a powder. It looks white, but it is colorless once you apply it. And by applying it, you, you'll be able to move around the color pencil particles you put on the paper. Um, so you're using a makeup applicator to put the powder on the paper or a brush. Um, the texture fixative, well, the name already implies it, it gives you a texture to work over with. Um, for example, uh, a lot of color pencil artists, at some point, they they can't work further because they the tooth of the paper is filled. But with this, that problem is over. You can, once the tooth is filled and you can't apply any more color pencil, you give your piece a light spray with this and you're good to go again for another two or three layers. Is it again, you can't work over it anymore than just spray again and again and again and again. You can do it endlessly. Um, but these two products, they don't work on just any kind of paper. Uh, they work best on Pastel papers. I have some examples here, such as the pastel nut and console meat tainters touch. I'm not sure if it works on the normal meat tainters, although that's a pastel paper as well, so maybe I'll just have to test it sometime, but I don't know for sure. Um, then, of course, U art, the U art paper. Um, so yeah, with just normal cotton paper or any other kind of normal paper, watercolor papers, you name it, those are too absorbent. They will absorb the, the powder and the, it, you won't be able to move your color pencil around just as well as you would on puzzle papers. It just doesn't work that well that way. If you do want to work on normal cotton papers, then they suggest that you uh, seal it with a gesso, uh, a gesso uh, coat, and then it should work. But I haven't tried that, so I can't say that myself. Um, anyway, yeah, let's give this stuff a try. I'm very curious and very excited because, well. Some people are crazy about it and are like, I can't do without it anymore. And other people are like, I just don't get this stuff. It doesn't work. How do I get it to work? So I'm curious to see how it will work out for me. So let's get on with it. First, you start by applying a light coat of the powder blender over your paper or the area you are going to color with color pencil. The powder blender acts like a lubricant for your color pencil and it will make it possible to move the color pencil particles around over your surface after you applied some. I used a cheap synthetic brush to apply the powder with on my paper. The paper that I'm using is pastel mud from Clairefontaine. You can also use sponges, makeup applicators, cotton swabs or paper stumps for the powder blender and to blend with. Even your finger, but it's not so nice to rub your finger over sanded surfaces, isn't it? <laughs> uh, 
It is also suggested that it works best to use an oil-based pencil like the Faber-Castell Polychromos for at least the first layer, as these don't crop onto the tooth of the paper as strong as wax-based pencils do. But after the first layer, it's fine to use wax-based pencils as well. When you start applying color, it's important to apply it with a light hand as you will find you don't need a lot of pencil when you work with the powder blender. In fact, the lighter your pressure, the better you will be able to move the pigments around when you start blending. I just apply a couple of super light pencil layers of different colors and then blend them together with a wee bit of powder blender on my brush. Remember, the first powder layer is still there underneath so you don't need much powder to get a good blend. You don't need tons of powder anyway, as a little goes a very long way. Also, because you don't need heavy layers of colored pencil with this powder blender, you'll find your pencils hardly wear down and thus hardly need sharpening. So it saves you quite a bit on restocking your pencils, especially when you consider how quick scented papers normally devours your pencils. So for me, that was a huge plus. So to test how well and smooth the powder blender blends, I went with a bokeh background. The reference I used is again from Paint My Photo website. I'll leave a link in the description. I start by sketching out light circles where I want the bokeh to be and start coloring around them with darker colors. Most of the background is green, but I use blues, reds and browns as well, especially in the areas I want to be very dark, almost black-like. Also, I should mention that after each layer that you blend with the powder blender, you should spray it with a light coat of textured fixative every time. This will seal your previous layers and at the same time restores the tooth of your paper. I mean, how awesome is that? If you don't do this, after each blend, you'll find it's hard to get rich colors and contrast in the end, because you keep just blending all of the layers together. Just seal it, wait 15 minutes at least for the fixative to cure, and continue with your next layer. So far I was really impressed with how well and easy the powder allows you to blend your colored pencils. Also, it saves you so much time. To get the soft edges on the bokeh, I'd normally have to apply many light layers and spare the lighter parts. This color building always costed me a lot of time. Not that I mind, because I do always enjoy the process, no matter how time consuming it is. But with the powder blender, it goes almost twice as fast. It's just a matter of applying, applying powder, then some light layer of pencil, and then blend it. You can tell how soft the edges are of the bokeh. Maybe the only drawback so far is that you have to wait 15 minutes after you've sprayed the fixative. Oh well, gives you a nice chance to make yourself a nice cup of tea. I really love tea. <laughs> so I pretty much finished the background in a little under 90 minutes. Whereas normally it would take me a good 4 to 5 hours to complete a background like this with my old method. On this small size. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? Sadly, the part of the twig got skipped because my camera somehow went super out of focus while I was detailing it. So I had to cut it out. For the little bird, I am only going to use the powder blender for the first two layers to quickly build up my colors and values and sculpt it into shape. The powder blender really kind of turns your colored pencils into pastels. Well, almost. It is far less messy and dusty than when you'd work with pastels still. Though it does create a bit of dust, so a good desk cleaning would be recommended after you're finished. Another thing I noticed while doing this piece was that I felt no cramps in my fingers or wrists. Because you constantly work with a light hand, your hands suffer way less stress, which in turn allowed me to sit on this piece for a lot longer and finished it in two sittings. So again, this saved me time so I could move on to a next project sooner. 
So now I am deepening some shadows and add darker values for the bird's darker markings. I am not worried about the lighter details and areas like I normally would. If I go to dark somewhere and I have no tooth left to fix it, I just give it a light coat of the textured fixative and we're good to go for another bunch of layers. They do recommend to use a sturdy surface when working with any of their fixatives or touch up texture because it leaves a light film that could damage if your paper bends. So if you work with these and plan on shipping your piece out, ship it flat, don't roll it up. Now the bird is really starting to take shape and start to look soft and realistic. It's now all a matter for me to touch up on the contrasts and the vibrancy of the colors. I really love colors that pop. While the chest of this blue tit is yellow, I threw a bit of blue in there for contrast. The yellow is a warm kind of yellow, so adding a cool blue in the shadowy areas of the yellow automatically gives you a stronger contrast that makes your yellow stand out even more. Also, I just love to use colors on the main subject that I used in the background and vice versa. This will keep your piece harmonized. While most of the background is green and yellowy orange, I did throw in a bit of blue in the far corner and on the twig because I knew the bird had blue in it. So in the end, it all will fit nicely together. Now I am adding the final and super fine details on the bird. You can see how easy it is to apply the light yellow over the dark colors. That is all due to the texture fixative. I really love that stuff. I really hope they soon start selling their products in Europe. I had to buy mine from Jackson's Art Supplies in the UK. So yes, I really, really love both products and have no regrets of buying them. The only cons for me is the availability for us here in Europe, as it would be nice to be able to order it a bit closer to home <laughs> and the 50 minutes drying wait time for the fixative spray to cure. But really, those are minor cons for me as the pros far outweigh them. It can make me work twice as fast, less stress on my muscles, much friendlier on my pencils as they hardly wear down and I can have infinite tooth on my paper. Like, whoa! <laughs> so we are nearing the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed watching it and that it was helpful. If it was, leave me a like. Also, if you don't want to miss out on any of my future videos, please hit the subscribe button on my channel. If you have any suggestions or questions or just want to say hi, leave a comment in the comment section. I hope you all have a wonderful Easter and hope to see you again in, an, in my next video. And as always, thank you for watching and have a good one.